welcome everybody to a brand new video here in our channel and what we're going to be doing in this time around is that we're going to be making a stunt game as requested in one of the comments that you wrote okay so if you want to follow along this tutorial what you can do is go down in the video description and look for the link containing this stunt unity package so what this contains is basically everything you see into this scene including this cart model so what you can do is just drag and drop this cart model and you have a basic camera following system so if you just import this package you should be able to just hit play and play the game so this is how the game plays actually let me just bring the camera a little bit closer so here is how the game plays so far nothing too special so what we have in here is just a basic car controller which we did into a previous video you can just toggle in between these i'll just toggle into all wheel drive we'll make this smooth time just a little longer and now we should have smoother transitions so what you can do is just play the game so far and just go ahead into the ramps have some fun and what I like to do in this video is just add in a very simple timer up here that shows if we are in air or not. So if we're not touching the ground, it means we are airborne. So that should be very simple to do. We, we can just cast a ray point or we can just check if all the wheels are touching the ground. So the smartest idea would be to just cast a ray somewhere in here and check if the ray is hitting a collision object down below so let's do that right now let's just create a new script here and let's call it something like ground check here is our new script open it up and this is all we have so far i'm just going to delete the update and the start and here we are going to define some values so first we are going to be defining a public float ray distance uh, we can, then we can just go ahead and use a fixed update and in here we are going to do some math so the first thing that we are going to do is cast a actual ray so in order to do that we first have to uh, we first have to define a ray cast so we're going to do ray cast hit and we can just call it something like hit actually it would be smarter to just define a private ray cast hit and just call it something like hit so we don't have to create a new instance of this every single frame so in here we can just do a simple if statement and ask if this hit is actually hitting something so in order to do that first we're gonna have to say if physics dot raycast and in here we have all of these values so it's pretty self-explanatory what you have to do in here we have to define a vector three origin. We have to define a direction, the maxim, the maximum distance. We're not going to use a layer mask because we just want to ask if we're actually hitting anything at all. And this should return a true or false value. So let's begin by giving it a origin. And obviously a origin is simply transform dot position. This transform dot position is the position of the object that this uh, script is attached to and since we just want to point downwards what we can do is say vector3 dot up and of course we just want to say minus that so we want to point downwards then we want to pass in the maximum distance which is this raycast distance so raycast distance and before we actually use the raycast distance, we want to pass in this raycast hit. So we just want to say out hit. So now this should give us a value right here. So what we're going to do is display that value. And uh, a very quick and easy way to display it would be to use a on GUI. So we have a on GUI function right here. And I'm just going to copy this paste it over here don't forget to close the brackets i'm just gonna move this slightly to the right and obviously instead of the gear num i'm going to pass in the object that this raycast is hitting so in order to do that we can just say hit dot transform dot 
game object dot name okay so far we have only a raycast that is outputting a transform name however what i'd like to do is to cast a ray that actually has some color so if this returns a true what i want to do is display a ray pointing downwards so to do that i'm going to use a debug dot draw ray and this draw ray takes in all of these elements which uh, we're going which we're going to use in a moment so we have the start which we have into this raycast physics we have the direction which we also have in here we have a color which we can give or maybe we cannot give the color at all and then we have the duration so let's use this draw ray and we can just copy the transform position paste it in here for the direction we're just going to use a minus vector 3 dot up we have a color and we're just going to pass in a color dot green maybe the duration will be hit dot distance there we go so now this should work all fine let's save it go back into unity after you're done with all of that what you're going to do is take this ground check and drop it inside the cart so now we have a ray distance and let's give it a length of 20. Let's play the game and let's see if anything happens. Okay, so here is our scene. We have gizmos and we can clearly see it is drawing a ray. And we can see the hit object stone path straight. However, if I decrease the ray distance to something like, I don't know, maybe 0.1. We should see that ray is disappearing which means the ray is so small that it doesn't hit the ground very well so what I, so what i want to do is increase it to where it just barely hits so there we go now this is indicating that we are hitting something and if we jump we should see nothing pop up in here let's see there we go Okay, so now we have an indicator that tells us if we're airborne or not. And now we want to do something about it. We want to have a some, some sort of a scoreboard in here. So let's just quickly create a text. Name it something like score. And there we go. Now we have a score text. And all we have to do is just go ahead and connect this score text into our game. So let's go back into the ground check and let's define some more values. The first one is going to be a public text score and it's yelling at us because we're not using unity engine dot ui it's still yelling at me but it's a bug that's not showing up the ui elements so this should work fine in the fixed update what i want to do is just change this score text and the way we're going to do that is by saying score dot text is equal to some text and now in order to actually keep track of the score we want to use another public load score so now we have a score value and a score text what we want to do is say score text and simply add in a plus score value now let's increment this value every time we are airborne and as we saw earlier every time that this method is not called means that we are airborne so if we're airborne we just want to say score value increments by some value so in order to do that we are just going to use a very simple flag function or a boolean public boolean is grounded is grounded gets triggered every time we set every time we check for this raycast so if the raycast hits something is grounded becomes false so is grounded is equal to false else is grounded is equal to true so the reason why i'm saying is grounded is equal to true then again is and is grounded is equal to false is because this gets called before the raycast function gets called so it sets to true and if it doesn't set it to false again we are airborne what we want to do now is say score is equal to if is grounded so we just say is grounded question mark score value times 
score increment value and we want to pass in a time value so time dot delta time and if we're not grounded we just want to do nothing so we want to pass ourselves, and we're just going to say score value there we go we are missing a score increment value and we're going to define it up here we're going to say public float score increment value and that is equal to 1.5 f so if we've done everything correctly we should have a working airborne function what we have to do in here is obviously pass this text drop it in here and simply hit play so there we go we have a score of zero if we try and jump and we make the ray distance to maybe one let's try to go up this and we're getting a null reference exception let's see what the problem is okay for for some reason it says this gui function is giving us trouble so i'm just going to delete it and let's see if it works and it still doesn't work for some reason let's see what the problem is Okay, so the problem is that the score value is at zero. And when we're adding this calculation and adding this to a zero value, it obviously becomes zero. So what we have to do is just add in a plus in here and go back into Unity. So let's see if it works. Okay, there we go it is working perfectly fine let's go ahead and try to jump one more time also if you want these numbers after this dot to disappear and show only the whole numbers it is actually very simple go back into your script and where you use the texts function in here all you have to do is say dot to string and inside the brackets you add in a zero and this will give you a whole number and if you want just one value after zero just add in a zero and obviously you can add in as much as you want so i'll just leave it at 0, 0.0 and let's see if it has worked There we go. It is showing only one number after zero. So thank you for watching uh, and I'll be back with another video.